So we're going to have a look at the benefits of the close range kinetic punch. So you'd be surprised just how powerful the close range kinetic punch is, uh, particularly compared to a close range boxing punch. It's really, really hard uh, to get enough power in a really close range boxing punch to make it worth throwing, to be honest. Uh, it's really difficult with the swing close in. I mean, you can get a little whack, but for the difference when you come round onto the knuckle, it's huge. And it, you can really see when you're, when you're close. If, I, if I'm hitting with the outside knuckle here, and I'm just tapping close, or I'm just throwing a tapping jab, then you can see clearly how it's a swing. So when we're looking at the kinetic chain close up, uh, it's really important to understand how to finish that. So when, when I am closer, I don't worry about getting more distance. Uh, and that's what you find a lot of the time in the ring. People are punching at a, uh, a certain range, their perfect range. And when they're not at that range, they'll change to a different... Uh, they'll throw an elbow or they'll move out and they'll be trying to get into this range. The beautiful thing about the kinetic punch is close or far away, you can hit really hard. And I, uh, I know I can hit a lot harder with my punch at elbow range than I can with my elbow. I mean, I don't practice my elbows as much, but that, who does? You know, and that's the beautiful thing of it. When you're training your punching, then uh, if we look at percentages, how many times have you thrown a punch? The, the punch is so familiar uh, to what you use. So, as opposed to elbows, you know, how much time have you spent training elbows as opposed to punches? So when I look at that, and when I'm looking at closer range, if I'm thinking of changing the range and throwing in an elbow, then I've got to train that elbow to the point that I know my hands. Then that'll come out under pressure uh, without thinking about it. So, if I can use my hands at elbow range and at long range, then that'll just give me a a greater ability to, del to deliver concussive power close in and far away repeatedly without changing what I'm doing or thinking about another strike. So let's look at the closer range uh, kinetic punch compared with the uh, driving punch compared with the swing. So if I'm close here and I'm swinging in like in the boxing gloves it's just it's very very difficult uh, to get a good impact closer in. I mean, I can get a snap, um, but because of the position, it's fairly, rarely, rarely worth throwing because you just don't get enough power. So if you think about if, if I'm at uh, this sort of distance, then with the kinetic punch, again, what I want to do is I'm, I'm lining up the forearm with the knuckles. So if I'm here, then all I need to do is bring the elbow up and then it's in line. So rather than coming in here, I'm just coming over. <coughs> so, and you can see how, uh, because I'm close up and I'm in line, there's a big difference in power, there's much more impact. And also, when I'm restricted with range, that's when I start to use and isolate the shock waves. When I've got a good distance, I can throw the shot in, or I can throw the shot in, and then I can put that snap on the end. When I haven't got the distance to build the power, then I can only put the snap on the end, and that is the key, and that's where the shock waves come in. So, forearm, knuckles, lined up. It doesn't matter where I am here, all I have to do is pick my elbow up, and it's in line. So with the closer range punches, it can be painfully obvious that they're not supported. So if you think if I'm tapping in there, the point of impact is the outside part of the knuckle. If I put a 90 degree line on the end of that, then it isn't supported. The angle that I'm hitting in is that way. There's nothing behind to support that. With the kinetic punch, it's at 90 degrees. So even close up, it's still supported. Now what's interesting is the other angles when I'm closer, if I'm down here, then I don't have to bring my elbow up at 90 degrees to hit kinetically. As long as my wrist and elbow is lined up, then basically I can just drive in from here because it's just as lined up as it would be if I was higher. 
So even if I'm close here, I can just move in <coughs> and punch the target kinetically at close range. Whereas I was, if I was here and I had to do a boxing punch, then I'd have to pull my hand back to whip it forward. Whereas as long as I'm lined up, then all I'm doing is moving myself across and driving the punch in. So if you look here now, if I'm just punching in here six inches and I'm going to uh, throw a boxing punch, then I'm going to whip. This is the moment, this is the, the motion that I'm going to use. My shoulder's going to drop because I've got to create that whip through it. With the kinetic punch, because I'm all I'm doing is lining up this and driving it in, I don't, there's none of this whip. I still put a whip on the end or a type of snap, but as long as I'm lined up, <coughs> then I can punch <coughs> straight in at close range, supported. So it's got a lot more poke and a lot more power. So, when we look at these, say I'm here like this, then power line, power line, power line, power line, power line. So, as long as my wrist is lined up with the forearm, then I can just, whatever position my arms are in then, I can just come out on a power line straight out. There's no build up to whip or to, to build up the power because I'm not swinging. So if, if, you th if I'm here and then I'm just coming up there or up there, Rather than sort of a swing, 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 I'm just driving in. Less movement, less energy. We think about with the arm now, and particularly if I'm if I'm in closer range, then if the arm's up, then I'm going to be coming up and bringing the elbow up to come over. If the arm's down, then I can just drive straight up here. So it's just whatever's available. I can mix and match as long as the forearm is lined up with the knuckle. If you think about this angle, if I'm just popping up from here and I'm, and I'm in position, then uh, like with an elbow, if the hand's in the way here, and the, the, you pull down on the elbow and throw the elbow. So as you pull this, there's a circular movement where you pull the hand down and then you come round with the elbow. Uh, so, and if I was this close with the boxing punch, then it, it just wouldn't be worth throwing. There's just nothing sort of there. But what I can also do from this position without changing the technique to an elbow is throwing the kinetic punch. And again, as long as I'm lined up and the wrist in the right position, if my arm's on there, all I'm doing is basically driving straight in in that position. I don't need to pull back, I don't need to create distance because I'm not swinging. So basically the hands up in the guard I can just pull that down slightly and then all I'm doing is just a little pop and that's the pullback but then I can throw the punch because I'm already in position. Or if the hands up and in the guard I can just come round and it's surprising, literally, round a corner. More on that later. So here, rather than pulling down and coming over with the elbow, what I can do is literally either just come straight in and round <coughs> with a kinetic punch, or even with my hands on it, <coughs> I can still hit in that close with a kinetic punch that's worth throwing because it's got more power and it's the driving position. So with a swing, if I'm up here and there's a little gap and I've got to come over in a swing, then I've got to come in, lower down and pop my elbow up here. If it's a very tight gap here like that and it's a really small area, then because of the swing, I can't actually get in. Because of the way I finish the swing, I can't actually get into that smaller area. Whereas with the drive, I can just drive straight through and then swinging. And again, from this position, I can hit 
really hard, close up, and in a position that you wouldn't be able to throw a boxing punch from, it wouldn't be worth it. So just like boxing, <clears throat> the kinetic punches can be thrown overhand or underhand. So the only thing that changes is am I my knuckles are either on top or they're underneath or they're on the side. And it doesn't really matter which angle I'm at here as long as the wrist is in the right position and the knuckles lined up there. So I can go right round the circle and it's still that stronger position. So I can hit over like this on this circle and I can hit over underneath like this, over like that. So I can follow. I've got all the same angles available and more than the boxing. So same with the shock waves is um, if I'm doing a rip over when I come under I just rip off in the same position opposite to where I am. So if I do a deep snap there and coming under I'm doing the exact same movement just rather than overhand it's underhand or on the side. To really understand about the close range punching, take the pillows off your hands. There's so many punches close up that I don't even know about and I don't even th uh, think are worth throwing when you're training in bigger gloves. You cannot understand how to deliver full kinetic chain power at close range. Take the gloves off, put some smaller ones on so you can get the better positions. MMA gloves or the smaller mitts where you can make a proper fist with only a thin bit of padding, makes it much easier. So when the range changes, uh, and even if you're close, then it's really hard to land the boxing punch. If you throw a long range boxing punch and the range changes to close, then you're just not in the position to throw that. You could be half turned or half twisted or you're coming over. That's why it's important to keep the hands lined up. So the beautiful thing about the kinetic punch is the range at which it's available even when it changes. If we think about this position, the bow position that I presented in the first part of the clip, then this strong position here, if I'm close here, then that <coughs> is the strongest <coughs> position <coughs> that I can punch back. And then if I'm further out here, so if all of a sudden I pull my hand back to throw the punch, he moves in, I'm still in position. Whereas with a boxing punch, if, if, if I come out and I'm turning and he moves in, then I hit with the fingers. The knuckle isn't lined up. So at every part of the movement with a kinetic punch, the knuckles are lined up. So the distance changes, it's less important, it's still going to hurt. So look here now, uh, what have we got? Six, eight inches. There's the swing. If we think about the kinetic. Now you'll notice when I swing, there's a big giveaway. I'm close in. As soon as I'm going to do this, because it's a swing, I have to bring my hand back to swing it in. So the shoulder drops. A massive giveaway. It's obvious you're going to you're going to be throwing a strike. So, um, from a kinetic point of view, if I'm here and then I'm throwing the kinetic punch, then my shoulder doesn't drop. I move and the punch lands kinetically. There's no giveaway. And that's the same long range as well. Uh, fighters are conditioned to look out for the boxing movements and the nuances that come from that, like the dropping of the shoulder for the whip. And the swing, with the kinetic punch, you don't drop the shoulder. It's a lot harder to read. You can't. It's, it's really, really hard to tell because I'm already in the position to throw the punch. And I'm not swinging. I don't need to put more energy in. I'm lined up. So if we're close in and I'm in a close guard position, then just by coming out and rotating around, I'm not landing on my kinetic knuckle there. So this, this motion is basically what you do in the gloves. This is what comes from the, the bigger gloves. It's this close up 
turn and twist to bring it round. So, from the kinetic point of view, from the guard, what I'm doing is I'm coming over. So rather than turning and twisting out, from here, I'm just coming over. So even if it's, say, if it's close here, I'm coming over. There. So rather than this sort of movement, we're getting this. Bang. 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 So again with the boxing, what you're doing is you're changing the way you're punching from the shoulder to the knuckle. That tweaks the mechanics. That lines everything up and doubles the power over three rounds. So when I talk about punching round corners, that's another beautiful thing about the driving punch when you're lined up, uh, is because I'm not swinging and I'm not whipping, uh, my ability to go round objects is massively increased. And to go round objects and land in a kinetic position uh, with a drive, not a swing. So uh, if we think about, uh, when I talk about punching round corners, then if, if we look here, I'm going to put this cardboard out so I can just about uh, land on my two knuckles here. So for me to look at that sort of trajectory, then I'm coming round there on a curve. So if I was throwing a swing, then as I, th as I threw the swing, I'd have to drop the elbow down to then go deep enough with this to then swing it back in. So even though it might just be a slight subtle movement here, at this position when I can hit with the two knuckles, if I try and swing at that distance, I just cannot get the depth of that because I need to bring this elbow in to then swing it over. So I might be exaggerating the movements a little bit, but it's exactly what you do in the boxing gloves. So kinetically, because it's a drive and I'm just driving around, then it's much easier for me to come around here and land on the target than if I was coming over with a boxing punch at that distance. And it's the same when arms are up, hands are in the way, and hands are over. If I cover the front of my face here, and I'm covered, and I've got my hands up, then the side's open. If I'm covering the side here, then you open for an uppercut. So you just cannot cover the whole part of your face. Uh, and there's plenty of gaps, and you only need uh, the size of your fist to get through. If you're training in big gloves, you're looking for bigger gaps you won't throw the punches into the smaller gaps also because this swing it's a lot harder to be very precise and to drive that into a smaller area because it's a swinging because it's a swinging motion rather than a drive with a boxing punch because it's a swing when I'm coming over I have to drop in and lift the elbow up it's not a drive so, again, kinetically, wherever the, the arm is, whatever position the arm is, if it's out or it's in or it's sticking out here, I can curve round that on a driving position. Push, 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 and land in a fully kinetic position, really close. But it's that ability to go round stuff and round corners. So even if I'm stood here and I'm stood right in front of the guy, if he's out here, I can come over there. If it's closer and if it's tight, I can still punch round that from where I'm stood. So it's surprising just how much you can put. If, if I'm further away, then I can still put a curve. I can come in in a straighter angle, but with a curve on the end. So I can come in straight and then come around and sort of, and like literally punch around the corner. And you think if I've only got a very small area to hit with, to hit in, and it's maybe this far away from me, so maybe if my hands are up here, 
and there's only a little teeny teeny little gap that's, that's just available through there and it's maybe this far away then if I wanted to throw a swing through there it wouldn't work because the swing it comes across at an angle and there's not enough room to get in there because you'd have to come in at an angle and swing down whereas with a kinetic drive I could punch straight through that and I'm not in any way swinging through so it's a lot easier to get through gaps and to drive the punch in and it's much more powerful close up. Now I've had a boxing glove because it's a swing as I throw the punch I've got to come in and then I've got to swing down here so I've got to come in at that angle to finish the punch because it's a swing. Kinetically I can drive straight round and drive it in at 90 degrees to the target. So I'm coming out there around the corner. So you can see here how slowly I can slide my knuckles straight in there and that is straight down the line. Now if I was throwing a swing then there's no way I could punch that target down there. It's too far away and look at the angle I'm coming in at. Look how wide the angle I need to finish that punch. Whereas when everything's in line I can punch straight down the tube. Now, if this doesn't change your mind then nothing will. Punch him around corners. So look at this angle here. It's literally 90 degrees to me now and it's sticking out what 12 inches? I don't know. So if I was gonna swing in here then I'd have to come across here and land in. So forget the boxing glove fitting down it, but if I wanted to land here, on there, then as I threw the boxing punch, I'd come over like this. And it's a big wide area. So I need a much wider area to throw the punch in. So kinetically, because I can punch around the corner and I'm lined up, then if I'm stood here, then I can turn and then I can drive straight in and hit on the two knuckles. So literally if I come in there, bang, bang, you can see how I can get in that little gap, go right down the tube, the precision goes to a whole new level. These are punches at angles that you just cannot do with a boxing punch. It amazes me just how many angles there are available, close range for the kinetic punch that it's just not worth throwing with a boxing punch. It's just the power is just not available with the swing in motion. Whatever curve, however extreme the curve I can make with my hand, that I can throw a punch, a kinetic punch, a kinetic driving punch on that curve. So there's loads more angles available. Um, because it's the drive rather than a swing and again it's because literally anywhere I can reach I can drive into very close short sharp shocks what we're going to look at is the five different shock waves uh, that are made to train on the end of the punch and I'd say these were at least 50%, at least 50% of the connect punch. Um, think about if you've got a knife with a really nice blade, perfectly balanced, but the end is dull and it won't stick in anything, it won't cut anything. You sharpen the edge of the blade, you sharpen the point, the cleaner it is, the easier it sticks in, the easier it cuts, the less effort it use, uses. And this is what I'm talking about with the shock waves. Do not underestimate the importance of the shock waves. So there's also a change that's made when you're looking at building power when you start really 
realising the benefits of the shockwaves. When I first started training, it was all about power and I was all thinking about the body and where I could be stood and how I could build that extra little bit of power and, and build up. And it was only at a certain point that I realised that there's a limit to the way you can build the power. And it's refining that and it's how you deliver the power that makes the biggest difference in what you're doing. You, what I realised was when I started to refine the shock waves was I was putting in nowhere near as much power as I used to and I was hitting much harder. So the effort that you're throwing and you're putting the punching in just goes down significantly just because you understand the bit at the end so much more and so much clearer. It's so much easier to finish the strike. I mean the other beautiful thing about the shock waves is they can be trained on elbows, knees, kicks, hammer fists, once you understand them with the punches, then you'll be using them on everything else and everything will be much sharper. So the first type of shock I like to use is what I call pullback. And that's all about the speed. Um, you think about where your muscles, your muscles are designed to pull rather than push. If I'm pushing this hand out, then I can pull this hand back much faster than I can throw this hand out. So if I pull this hand back really fast, this will throw this hand out much quicker. So I can do that with the single arm as well, is where I'm... And um, when I talk about with a boxing uh, whip in the original one, where you have to create a whip to come back, um, with this, when you're putting a snap on it, you're, you're creating that whip, and there's like... There's an extra whip you have to put on the end of that, so just the basic movement has a swing or a whip, then when you land, you have to put like an extra snap on that to finish the punch. It's not done with the swing. So basically the pullback training is the key to speed and that's the first one in the shock waves. And what I'm doing with the pullback is basically when it, to create a snap, I'm pulling my hand back faster than I throw it out and I'm going in it at a certain depth. With the pullback, what I'm doing is I'm trying not to hit the surface. I'm just training the bounce back. So it's like you hit in gloves, but without the gloves on. So in gloves, because I've got an extra bit of pattern, I've got to go in a little bit, but my knuckles don't actually go into the, in to touch the, the pad. So that's what I'm doing with the pullback, is rather than hit the bag, I'm pulling it back. So I'm not going in at a depth very similar to the light snap, but it hasn't got the depth for the light snap, and it's just training the pullback, the bounce, that gives it that extra poke. Number two is the light snap. Very similar to the pullback, it's just the depth that you go in. It can have knockout power. You only have to go in a couple of inches in the right place, bone on bone, and it's surprising just how much shock can be created. The interesting thing with the light snap, it's like a boxer's snap, is it takes more energy than the deep or the ripping snap, because you're having to pull the energy back. So with the light snap, I'm snapping into the target in a certain shape, at a certain depth. So it's very similar to the pullback, it's just deeper into the target. So with the deeper snap, I'm using the same snap that I developed with the light snap, and the better the light snap is, the better the deep snap will be. The better the deep snap is, the better the rip will be. The better the rip, the better the cleave will be. So 
when we think about the deep snap, what I'm doing with the deep snap is rather than uh, snapping in and using this pull to create the snap at the end when the hand shoots out, I'm using my head to fire the snap into the target. So normally when I'd snap out and bounce straight back, I'm coming over and I'm staying on target a little longer and driving the punch in considerably deeper than I would with a light snap and deeper than I can with a boxing punch and that's what's interesting with the deep snap uh, I'd say it's the first serious knockout sort of power level uh, with the kinetic punch but also it's the ability it's the depth of that driving punch that can keep people off balance it's gonna hurt but with a boxing punch, if you get hit by a boxing punch, there's so much depth on it, you hit him with the outside, you do not get that drive to knock it off balance. Unless it knocks your head back enough, or it catches you, and the head gets thrown back enough that it'll catch you off balance. With a driving deep snap, that'll knock you off balance. It's got that much poke on the end that when you train that, no matter how close you are to the person, when you do that deep snap, that fist is going to go into that depth of the deep snap. So they're going to move. So it's either going to really hurt them or it's going to knock them off balance. And that's the, the extra thing is, if they're off balance, they have to get back in balance to hit you back. And that's something you don't get with a boxing punch, is that ability to keep them off balance because of the depth and the extra poke in the kinetic punch. So, deep snap. So if I throw a, a light snap a light snap on a straight punch, if I then put a deep snap on that exact same punch, then that's 30% more power in the punch. Just because I've done something different on the end of the punch and that's just how much of a difference it makes. So the fourth shockwave on the list is the ripping shockwave. The ripper is a monster of a shockwave and Compared to like the light shock wave, the ripper is 70% more power than the light snap and 40% more power than the deep snap. So basically if I throw if I throw a light snap kinetic uh, jab there, a light snap in, if I then place a rip on the end of that instead of a light snap, then that makes that punch 70% more power. That's what a difference it makes by refining the snaps on the end. So with shockwaves, everybody that punches uses the shockwaves. It's just that most people don't isolate them and train them and really refine them. Over years of punching, you will develop a sharper shockwave. But when you isolate them, the difference is significant. So with the ripper, rather than just driving in deep like the deep snap what I'm doing is I'm coming in at a little bit more of an angle I'm going in just as deep as the snap but I'm ripping out and it's really effective to the body and to the head and because of the motion that you're coming in the 45 degree rip it really tilts twists rotates the head really well and hurts to the body so the rip is very effective and a, a very powerful punch um, very natural to use on the hooks uh, because as you, as you hit with, even with a normal boxing punch there's, that, there's a natural pull that sort of comes off so that's what I'm doing but kinetically lined up and what's interesting with the, with the rip is because I'm ripping out I can finish that punch in a position to throw the next punch as such so because I'm not punching in landing and then sort of coming back or linking that up with the other one what I'm doing is I'm coming in I'm landing and then I'm ripping out so when I finish the punch I'm finished in a position 
with the opposite hand ready to throw the punch. So if I hit with a deep snap there and I just come back, if I rip, rip in motion makes the setup for the next shot uh, just much quicker because I'm snapping out as well. So as I rip in, as I rip out, I'm back. So you think about it with a big hook. If I come over here and I rip off with a hook, at the split second that I finish that punch, I'm back and I'm ready to throw this other punch because it rips off and pumps back and it's using that most efficient figure of eight movement. Very much like swimming. So like I said with the rip, the rip's perfect because of the angle it comes in and the way it twists and rotates the head as you hit. So if we look here with the rip, if I'm coming in here with the rip then I'm ripping off and out. As I hit, so you get the tilt, twist and rotation as you land the shot. So the cleave or cleaving shockwave is the new edition number five. So I basically thought that I'd unlocked all this because there's only basically so many ways you can create a snap on the end of a punch. But what's interesting is it, uh, as the more you do, like with the light deep in the rip, the more you realise that there's other little subtle, <coughs> subtle ways. So the cleave or cleaving shockwave is a mixture between the deep snap and the rip and it comes in at an angle and drops the energy drops more energy into the body it, it, and i haven't had it measured i'm not sure about the power levels but what i can tell you is it hurts a lot more it feels painful and it, because there's more energy going into the body basically uh, and the reason it works so well is because if you look if i'm relaxed and i just throw any sort of kinetic punch from here, they all drop in and over slightly. Taking advantage of the gravity as well, but more energy goes into the body. So what I'm doing with the cleave is it's similar to the rip, but what I'm doing is I'm actually digging this knuckle in. I'm going in at an angle that I would rip at, but at a depth of which I'd throw the deep snap, but I'm not ripping out. Well, I am ripping out, but I'm not ripping out at the same position as the rip. I'm coming off at a different angle where the energy goes into the body more. So you think about, if I just throw this punch out now, with a light snap, I'd come out and I'd come straight back. The deep snap, I'd drive it in. With the rip, I'd come over on a bit more of a curve, drive it in and then rip off. With the cleave I'd come over, but then I'm coming in and I'm slicing in on a slight angle, but digging in on the kinetic part of the knuckle. So the cleave is a very similar way that I actually finish my bare, my bare knuckle uh, standard boxing punch. And it's that angle that I'm putting onto the kinetic punch that produces the cleave, the cleave in shockwave.
So let's talk uh, really close. Punching. So if my hand's up uh, by the face here, then um, probably I'm fingertip off actually. So I can touch it with my finger. Can I punch from a fingertip distance away? Can I build enough power for it to be worth throwing a punch from this sort of distance away? And with a boxing punch, no, because um, from that sort of distance, the glove's touching. <laughs> so, you don't even get a chance to learn. Pillows go away for this. Smaller gloves. So, when I'm really close, what I can do is I'm bending my wrist down and I'm locking it in this position. I'm not locking it tight, but I'm holding it there. So it's actually bent like this. So with this wrist bent here, I'm coming in and I'm cleaving down the face. Across. And this is actually a swing. <laughs> so it's one of the few swings that I actually do. So the wrist is bent. And I'm swinging across. But again, I'm hitting with the kinetic part of the knuckle. And with the wrist bent, if I pull it down there, you can see how the kinetic part of the knuckle still goes right down the middle of the forearm. So when I'm up here, then again, I can literally, at touching distance, what I'm doing is I'm coming down and I'm trying to go as deep as I can in. With a kinetic chop, then it's not actually a shock wave that you put on the end of the punch, but it's uh, a motion that you can specifically do that'll give you more power on the end of the punch and increase uh, what the shock wave does. Um, so, and again, it's a driving motion, it doesn't actually work if you're doing a boxing punch. So, with a basic boxing punch, if you come out or you come out horizontal and you're coming around, then to finish the boxing punch you tense the tricep. With the driving position and the kinetic punch you don't have to tense the tricep to finish because all the uh, energy is on the shoulder because it's a stronger position there's no energy leaking out the elbow. So what happens is when I then say I, say I throw a straight shot out if I then exaggerate tensing my tricep as I throw that punch then that will drive this punch forward a lot harder. It's surprising. But, if you think of a boxing style, then if I'm swinging in, I have to tense that to finish with a boxing punch. You don't have to tense it to finish with a kinetic one. If I'm here and I'm close in, if I'm just swinging there, just by tensing my tricep, it's going to bring my arm round on an arc there and swing it round even faster. So that's another reason why you tense your tricep to try and dig it in to get around onto the knuckle. But with the kinetic chop, when I tense my tricep, it drives the knuckle forward rather than across. But you have to be in the driving position that isn't available in the boxing gloves. There. <laughs> yeah, that way.